Welcome to another episode of Conversations with Karen and Kat. I'm Karen Scott Green. And I'm Kat Hardrick. And we're here with the fabulous Mrs. Cheryl with Lugamere Restaurant. Yes, in the city of Lawrenceville. Thank you so much for having us today. Oh, thank you. It's yeah. my pleasure. Awesome. First, before we start, where are we exactly located? Well, Lugamere Restaurant and Event Space is located in the beautiful Lawrenceville. It's 706 Grayson Highway yes. in the city of Lawrenceville. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, we are in the city. And look yes. at all this fabulous food. <laughs> and so what are your hours for event space and the mm -hmm. restaurant? Okay, well, we're open Monday through Friday uh, from 12 noon till around 7.30ish. And... Um, our events are usually on weekends, mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. so uh, we have your Saturdays and Sundays planned for your events. So if you want to eat, you must call. Sometimes it's better to call with our limited staff. Okay. It's important to call and place your order. And you can find our menu on our website. Okay. Yes. And what's your website? Our website is www.legomier.com. And this is Caribbean cuisine. Absolutely. Yeah. Authentic Caribbean That's cuisine. Right. Yes. Specific I, to St. Lucia. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. I didn't know that. Because <laughs> I'm ready to dig in. Mm -hmm. I've got steamed vegetables um, and vegetable roti and mm. plantains and rice and peas. Yes. yes. I said it right. Rice yes. and peas, rice and not peas, peas and rice. Not peas and rice. <laughs> okay. Uh, we were educated today, right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Kat, what do you have? My famous curry chicken. And I yeah. love this, right? So the first time I had it, I ordered it to go and she showed it to me. And let's just say I, it never left the building, right? <laughs> a sample yeah. became a meal. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It That's looks right. delicious. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So beautiful. thank you so very much. And tell everybody one more time your location. Uh, we are located at 706 Grayson Highway in Lawrenceville, Georgia, Suite 208. So you can order catering from us or you could stop by for a meal. It's my pleasure to serve you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome back. We are here today with Councilwoman Marlene Taylor Crawford of Lawrenceville, yes. uh, Georgia. Yes. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for Thank joining us. Thank you so much you. for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first we would be remiss if we did not congratulate you on being the oh, first um, woman of color. Actually, I'm not. You are not no, the I'm first. Not, mm. I'm the second. Mm. Mm. I Victoria Jones. Oh, uh, yes. I thought you were the first. Yes. So she yes. was um, appointed. Okay. Mm -hmm. She finished out the term for um, council member okay. Tony Powell. Mm -hmm. And then she ran for office in 2019. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. She ran unopposed, but I'm the first um, African American woman to run with opposition. Gotcha. So you right. mm -hmm. want to okay. contest it. Right, right. exactly. Okay. So you can say that, but right. not the first yeah, time. Yeah, that's right. It, it is. So it I'm is. very honored. And we're saying congratulations to that, right? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Um, and so you've been in Lawrenceville and in Gwinnett, active and on the ground, mm -hmm. working for quite some time. I have been. Yes. I'm very thankful. And yes. so you have... Um, the heart of a servant because you have been active with the United Ebony Society. Um, you're an educator. Mm -hmm. We love teachers. Mm -hmm. We love teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, and you were president of the United Ebony Society for how many years? For 10 years. For 10 years. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know, the United Ebony Society is a community based organization that brings um, cultural awareness. To, Absolutely. to Gwinnett County. And Educating the community. Mm -hmm. We host the annual Dr. Martin Luther King Day Parade mm -hmm. and also the Black History Month celebration at the courthouse, also a Juneteenth celebration. Mm -hmm. We were actually the first organization to host the Juneteenth mm -hmm. celebration in Gwinnett County. Mm -hmm. And we have host political forums, but I would be remiss if I did not mention the late co-founders of the United Ebony yes. Society. Bobby Susan Moore mm -hmm. and Deren Moore, who were my mentors. Yes. Who I met um, in about 2000 at Christ the King Baptist mm -hmm. Church in mm -hmm. Decula. 
Okay. I remember. So those two, those two, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 very familiar. Yeah. Very familiar. Yeah. Absolutely. Very familiar with Absolutely. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about your background because I met you where my children had you at WC Brick. Yes, and I was the so, school counselor yeah, there. Yeah. And that was actually the second um, school that I worked at mm -hmm. in Gwinnett County. Mm -hmm. So if I can just back up a little bit. Yes. And um, so when I came to Georgia in 1999, I actually came from the New York City Public School mm -hmm. System. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was a school counselor there when I came to Georgia. In 99, I worked first in DeKalb County for mm -hmm. one year. Then I came to um, Gwinnett County okay. working as a special education teacher. Mm -hmm. And then in about 2002, that's when I went to Britt Elementary to work as the school counselor. And, I was actually, and that's in Snellville yeah. for people who mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. And I was actually there for 12 years. Okay. And at one point, I was the only counselor for about five years. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I love the experience working at Britt Elementary. Yeah. For all the schools, schools that right. I have worked yeah. at. Right. Mm -hmm. that's not but I've worked at Britt the longest. Mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. I, um, I moved here. The same time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From Chicago. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know, oh, right. Oh, yeah. Oh. And when I ran into you again, I was telling my kids, and my son was like, Miss Marlene Taylor Crawford, the one with the locks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was really good for the kids to see someone who looked like them who had natural mm -hmm. hair and just someone that they can connect to Thank and you. very approachable. Mm -hmm. And for my son to remember like all those years mm -hmm. back, I mean, his first name, Miss Molly <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. When I see yeah. students who uh, are in college or graduated from college yeah. and they're just out working, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so old. <laughs> but it's you so don't look nice. a day over 30. <laughs> but it's so nice when they remember me. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. what it's all about. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so tell students remember the teachers that made the teachers and educators that make impacts. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Very easy to do, mm -hmm. right? Because you guys had a lot of hard work. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And when I was um, at Discovery High School, mm -hmm. I worked as a career academy coach, meaning that I worked mainly in the community, bringing in the business partners mm -hmm. to work with the students. Mm -hmm. And then I was also the career academy specialist, mm -hmm. and I worked with students on their post secondary mm -hmm. plans. So about oh, three weeks ago, I saw a, a student, and she was like, "Miss Taylor Crawford, mm -hmm. I'm going to Howard University." Oh, oh nice! She said you were the one who mm -hmm. motivated me to go nice. to HBCU. Oh, you. oh, oh nice. just meant so much to that me. Is nice. I know it did. So definitely, as an educator, we definitely touched mm -hmm. the future. Mm -hmm. So it's just mm -hmm. it's very rewarding. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. We've been doing a lot of conversation about stopping the school to prison pipeline. Mm -hmm. You know and a lot of the work you've done is hearing that, you know, you're making sure a person goes from K through 12 and now they're going on to college, you yes. know, that it can be done and a lot of impact that you don't even realize you do just pouring yeah. into these kids. Absolutely. You know? So when people would ask me, well, how was it going from elementary to mm -hmm. high school? Mm -hmm. And I say, well, those are my older, my little ones that just grew up a little older. <laughs> right, right, right. right. And I love both levels. Yeah, yeah. I've worked in, um, with middle school, school students, however, not within the school system, more mm -hmm. like after school programs. Mm -hmm. But I would definitely work on all of them. Okay. I love children of all ages. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That's good. It shows. It shows. So I, I, I do know that you, because I, I was at the um, soil. The school is so good. I, I know, know right? Yeah. I've tried to eat too much, but <laughs> I was at the soil dedication um, last summer. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw that you were part of the Gwinnett Historical Society. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about like how you got involved? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is the Gwinnett Historical Restoration and Preservation Board. Mm -hmm. And I was actually appointed, in order to be a board member, you have to be appointed by one of the commissioners. Okay. Oh, okay. And I was appointed by Commissioner Marlene Foster to mm -hmm. serve. Because mm -hmm. she, knows, she, she knows my passion for education yes. and mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. So I'm very honored that she gave me the yes. opportunity mm -hmm. to serve. And last year, I was the chair of woman of the board, hmm. and we partnered with the Gwinnett Remembrance Coalition, and they also partnered with the Equal Justice Initiative in order to um, 
have the soil collection ceremony mm -hmm. to honor the life of Mr. Charles Hale, mm -hmm. who was lynched downtown Lawrenceville on the square. A lot of people mm -hmm. do not know no, that that actually yeah. happened. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, a few months after, actually on MLK Day or Dr. King Day, we actually had the marker installation. So if you were to go downtown Lawrenceville and Perry Street okay. and Pike, you will see the marker there. Mm -hmm. Perry and Pike. Yes, mm -hmm. right there, right by the um, old historical courthouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to go look for that. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So we always have to ask, what was your why mm -hmm. for running for office? Okay. You, you've got all this background of community service, um, and being and, and being a servant to the community, what made you? What led you to transition to money for public uh -huh. office? So my two loves have always been um, education and community service, mm -hmm. and I'm so thankful that I was able throughout my life to bridge the two together. Mm -hmm. So running for public office was just an expansion of the work that I was doing already okay. in the community, mm -hmm. and I saw such a great need. And I, first of all, I love living in the city of Lawrenceville, and I saw great needs. And one of the needs that I wanted to address was um, the disparities that I saw mm -hmm. between people who live in the city of Lawrenceville and they, they have certain things, and other people who live in the city of Lawrenceville are going through things and not their voices not being heard and not right. being represented. So people encouraged me for years, well, why don't you run mm -hmm. for office? Mm -hmm. But, you know, everything is in timing. Right. And I was like, well, everything I has its season. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So um, I thank God mm -hmm. that the time was in 2021 mm -hmm. to run. And for me, it was just another way. It is another way to serve the community. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. So it was definitely a natural transition for me. So it wasn't like, okay, well, what do I do now? This and that. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's a learning curve. But at the same time, I had the skills mm -hmm. in terms of being engaged, with, knowing how to engage with the community, knowing community members. Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't know everyone. I'm meeting right. people. Mm -hmm. But definitely, I have grown to know and love people in the community and see the needs. So for me, it wasn't very difficult to make the transition. It definitely seems like it was very easy to transition in that. And I'm not saying your job is easy, but what I'm saying is being an educator, dealing with parents and family members, yes. whether, you know, like my family is the traditional mom and dad. My parents passed by the time I was five, so, so I had, sorry. you know, the village. Right? Yes. And so you have to deal with, you know, grandparents or guardians or foster parents Absolutely. and different personalities and the, the whole plethora of children and cousins, but you have to learn how to communicate, exactly. but that also puts you in the in the forefront of the community. And so now that you're out here serving, now you know how to talk, because I feel like sometimes people don't know how to talk to us. Exactly. And as a school counselor, a counselor, period, you better know how to talk. Right. And right. not just talk, but listen. Listen. That's and it. Listen. That's listen. It. That's and it. listen to understand. Not mm -hmm. to respond. Right. And to be judgmental, but to understand. Mm -hmm. And right. of course, you have to have empathy for mm -hmm. people. So Ooh. if you do not have empathy, this is not the Ooh. type of work. And people will, people will see it. They will see it. They will sense it. Um, and they won't engage, mm -hmm. you know, because they'll... Oh, she's another politician. Exactly. He's another politician. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, they just came around here to get my vote. And so people will sense it if you're not genuine. And so when you're genuine, that will flow through. Um, and with, with, uh, with saying that, how have you found community engagement since you've been on the other side yeah. now that you're okay. here? Okay. Yeah, so we so <laughs> there, girl. We are like, <laughs> so. I love community engagement. That was actually one of the platforms that I ran mm -hmm. on transparency community engagement and access. So if people don't feel like they are engaged in the community, mm -hmm. they feel like they do not have a sense of belonging mm -hmm. and they do not feel vested in the community. Yeah. So to me, that's very fundamental to be able to engage in the community and let people know that I am approachable, I'm accessible, and I understand a lot of things that um, you're going through especially not just as a school counselor from my experience working with families, but also from my own personal experience. So it's not like I'm so far removed from the yeah. things that I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. So I feel that I'm very relatable. 
and I definitely want to do my best to help. So if you are going to run for public office, you have to have empathy, Absolutely. running for the right reason, mm -hmm. you want to help, and you're willing to do the work. Because it takes a lot of hours, a lot yes. of times. It's, <laughs> time. it's not like, okay, it's 5 o'clock now, my work is done. I'm yeah. <laughs> no, so I receive phone calls quite late, mm -hmm. um, emails, but that, that's, that's part of the... Um, the work that I do, but most of all, I love meeting in the community, okay. going out, um, meeting with people, and just having those conversations. And sometimes they are difficult because sometimes people are upset. It's yes. not like all the time, oh, Miss Taylor yeah. Crawford, we love you. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's like, wait a minute, what yeah. about my taxes? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, my sidewalks. <laughs> so, what, what are, what would you say are your three top priorities for the city of Milwaukee? Okay, mm -hmm. so. Um, I'll tell you this for a lot of different reasons, and the phone calls that I'm receiving, mm -hmm. meetings that I'm having, only solidifies what um, I was running on. One, people have to understand that their voices are, will be heard. That's right. And people have to understand the power that they have. Mm -hmm. So come to the council meetings, find out what's going what's on. Be proactive what instead days? of reactive. What days are the council So meetings? it depends on, um, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I just want our listeners, they need to know. Yeah. Well, you can find out the exact days if you go on the City of Lawrenceville's website, but I can tell you that on Wednesdays we have our business meetings. Okay. Not every Wednesday. Right. It's one, one, once a month on a Wednesday, business meeting. Once a month on a Monday, we have our regular council meeting, okay. and that is the time that um, the community can come out during the council meeting. We had one this Monday that just passed on the 22nd of August in order to um, have public comments during okay. that time. So during the business meeting, there's, it, starts, it starts at 5, mm -hmm. there's no public comments, okay. but during the regular meetings, there are public That's what, comments. Okay. But if you can't physically come, you can watch it on Facebook. Yes. So with technology now, okay. there's no reason. Exactly. But we would love for you to come physically. But if you can't, at least be in the know by yeah. watching the meeting. So that's really important. Also, another priority, um, making sure that people understand their rights when it comes to being a tenant. Many of the phone mm. calls that I'm receiving, people are so upset. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do have some slum lords yes. like we do in yes. other cities, mm -hmm. and that's something that needs to be addressed. But one of the concerns is that people don't even understand their rights, mm -hmm. and they are signing lease and some lease a lease mm -hmm. because they're under sometimes mm -hmm. under pressure in a crisis situation. They need to get out of whatever situation they're in in order to move into a home, mm -hmm. apartment, and because of that. They're not really understanding, okay, know what you're signing. Yes. But even if you don't really have all that information, there are certain rights that you still have, whether you understand every detail mm -hmm. of your lease, mm -hmm. and as an attorney, you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. There are certain rights that you have under Georgia law yes. and under federal law, but a lot of people don't understand yeah. what their rights like are. Like if your landlord tries to make you responsible for all your repairs. Exactly. Right. right. <laughs> But well, then there are places that they can go to get this information, though, right? Where should they go? Right. There, there are nonprofit mm -hmm. organizations. Mm -hmm. They can contact legal aid. Mm -hmm. They do not have um, okay. money to have a private attorney. Okay. And unfortunately, many of the people who contact me, they don't, don't have, have this money. extra money mm -hmm. right. to hire an attorney to yeah. try to deal with the landlord-tenant issue. Mm -hmm. Another concern is affordable housing. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yes. People are being put out, and when they are put out, they have nowhere that's accessible in many cases for them to live, mm -hmm. and they have to end up moving out of the city limits because they can sometimes out of the county okay. because they can't afford to live. And many of the hotels um, within Gwinnett County are being used as de facto housing. Mm -hmm. And as a school counselor, I see that all the time, and I saw that going back not recently, now in 2022. I saw it's that. It's been going on for at least yeah. 10 years. Yeah, at least, yeah. absolutely. And unfortunately, a blind eye was turned mm -hmm. on that concern. So this is a result of that. So we, I really want to do my best to educate tenants 
also um, letting them know that there is also a pathway to mm-hmm. home ownership because that's important too. So there's a lot of organizations that help with things like that too. But understanding how government works yeah. is really yes. important too. Mm-hmm. So I'm very intentional during the council meetings, Ooh. even though I might know the, the answer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. I want it broken down so that the public can, can understand, understand what's being said. I have gone to Lawrenceville City Council meetings, and that's one thing I wanted to say is that you not only have your priorities, you know what you want to do, but you speak up and speak out. You actually fight for all of the city of Lawrenceville. And so if people need to go there so that they can learn and understand and ask questions. The website is available, Facebook and everything, but you really need to go into the city council meetings if you possibly can and have a conversation with you so you can understand yeah. what's going on. Exactly. And I mean, when you are on the diocese, uh-huh. you know, and you're Absolutely. able to ask those questions and break things down because a lot of times we don't know what is, you know, turning the, 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 um, the zoning, when you, exactly. you know what I'm saying, yeah. land use and all that stuff. And these are things that I'm still yeah. learning too, so there's a lot of reading involved mm-hmm. because there's a lot of terminology, just like in the legal field, mm-hmm. military, you have certain uh, terminology. Yeah, it's zoning drug, is legal. Yeah, drug, okay, you know, yeah. And, you know, we use all these abbreviations, yes. and people are like, what, mm-hmm. what's happening here? I don't understand that. And that's how people feel as though they're not engaged because now you're speaking a language that they're like, yes, I don't know what this means. Mm -hmm. So I try to break it down as simple. Now, sometimes Mm -hmm. it might be a little annoying for other people. (laughs) But hey, you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for your your taxpayer. You're doing it for the tax. They need a return on their investment. And that's what you're doing. And that's exactly what I said when I was in Mm -hmm. a meeting. and less, uh, less than a week ago in the paper mill community, mm-hmm. expect a return on your investment. Mm-hmm. You have to. Yes. And the bottom line, as a council member, I work for the community. That's right. Absolutely. That's yeah. right. I know when we were out canvassing, a lot of, uh, several times in speaking with people, they would say, well, I don't vote because it doesn't matter. Mm. They're going to do what they want to do anyway. That breaks my heart. It does. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it does. that's the it's like the chalkboard. Yeah. So what, what, what we explain to people is, you know, if there's any, you should vote all the time for everything yes. anyway. But where you definitely want to vote is on the local level. Because what happens on the local level impacts your life on a day-to-day exactly. basis. Exactly. What happens in Congress, what happens in the White House, mm-hmm. that that will impact you, but it takes longer to trickle down. Right. But on the city council level, if they're rezoning a, a, a spot of land that's up the street from you, that rezoning would imp- could, is going to impact yeah, your property value. That's right. And, and, your, and, and, your your life. and or your property. So I live in Snailville and a, a Ton of trees behind the so the, the, the side of the street that from the on the other side of the street where uh-huh. people live across from me. There's a bunch of trees behind their homes. They cut all those trees down. They build like less than ten homes. Right mm-hmm. now we are experiencing storm Runoff. water. Yes, right. And so you have to go and talk and speak and 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 try to fight. Not not everything you can stop. Right, because growth is coming. Right, development right. is good. I mean, the city of Lawrenceville is beautiful. You know, you guys Thank are doing a great you. job. It's safe. It's clean. I was here last night, <laughs> you know, doing a meeting and everything and stuff. But we we have to be smart about it, right? And you want to be informed as best you can, you know. Okay. So, what are some ways people can get in contact with you to learn more and ask questions? So, before I tell you that information, yes, I do want to emphasize that we have to ensure that. Young people are getting involved in That's understanding right. city government okay. mm-hmm. too. So I definitely encourage young people, high school students, even younger, to come to the council meetings or just um, email me, ask questions about um, what is happening mm-hmm. and how they can get connected, maybe volunteering, internships, yes. there's different ways. But I don't want anyone to think that this is just limited to a certain age group. I want to engage people of all ages. I'm also very passionate about our seniors. So one concern that I had um, 
there was no information on the City of Lawrenceville's website regarding seniors. That's because we have a partnership uh, and agreement with um, Gwinnett County, okay. and they provide all the senior services. So unless the average person is not going to know that and not really know that they live within the city limits that these services are available, so it was really important to have that information because when I was campaigning, I met people of all ages. Yes, yes. All so, ages. Yeah. Um, so two questions. With the senior programs, are those provided at the city park? Is that as a senior yeah, park? Yeah, the, okay. the parks, yes, okay. absolutely. Uh -huh. The senior centers. The senior centers. Mm -hmm. um, and Gwinnett County has a wealth of programs mm -hmm. for seniors, but not all seniors are necessarily aware of it. We just can't mm -hmm. take for granted. I said, you know, check the website, but not everyone is taking us. Uh, exactly. Or do don't have, have access. access. Yeah. That's right. So mm -hmm. I don't want to just yeah. defer yeah. everything to the website. So the senior programs are at the municipal, are at the city of Lawrenceville parks, or are they at Gwinnett County? Parks? No, this is the parks of Gwinnett County. Gwinnett, by okay. Gwinnett County Got it. Parks. Okay. Right. So I just wanted to really talk about the importance mm -hmm. of having people of all ages um, be involved in, mm -hmm. yeah. and there are different programs that we have through the, the city, different mm -hmm. partnerships to ensure that we are engaging our young people to be Absolutely. involved in, in different levels. And then, because I, I can't let these opportunities be missed, mm -hmm. you, you did mention that there are internships with the city. Can you tell uh -huh. us a little bit more so about that? Impact 46 mm -hmm. has a program that's called Summer of Impact. Mm -hmm. and Students are selected, they have to actually apply for the positions, and they actually put paid positions okay. within the city of Long Island. Paid is always nice. The different good. departments or different businesses mm -hmm. that partner, so that's a great opportunity. Okay. What ages? Um, I believe that starts with age 16. Okay, good. So they can uh, find out more contact um, Impact 46. Do they have to live within the city limits of? Lawrenceville? Or well, Lawrenceville. most of the students, um, they live, if they don't live within the city limits, they go to Central Gwinnett High mm -hmm. School or Discovery High School, okay. which are within the, the city limits. limits. Okay. okay. So um, someone might attend Discovery High School, but they don't necessarily mm -hmm. live within the city limits. Okay. Um, and of course, um, Central Gwinnett, most of the, the students who go to Central Gwinnett you know, live oh, within the city okay. limits, but not necessarily Discovery because it's a little further down. They have some yeah. Duluth. Right, yeah, exactly. yeah, because yeah, it was um, students came from Burke Law, Meadow Creek, mm -hmm. even Collins Hill, mm -hmm. um, Brookwood, some from Central to form the Discovery okay. Cluster. Mm -hmm. But if they're they're either residents of Lawrenceville or they're attending Central mm -hmm. Gwinnett mm -hmm. or Discovery, Discovery, they could apply for that. Right. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. And I believe Maxwell High School as well, but I'm not too sure, but I know definitely mm -hmm. Central and Discovery. And now that's on the website that they can. Yeah, in fact, mm -hmm. so that's only during the summer. The okay. Yeah, impact, but that's a great opportunity, and, and that's really promoted mm -hmm. in a great way so students can know what's okay. going on. Okay. Yeah. But I want to encourage students um, to definitely, when you're at school, speak with your counselor, mm -hmm. find out about other opportunities, because of course it's limited, so it's not like you know, everyone who's applying can participate, yes. mm -hmm. but they can also reach out to local businesses, um, the hospital, they have certain ways that someone can apply to the hospital, mm -hmm. when at, um, Northside, um, when that is within the city limits. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's, okay. and of course the college, college students can participate in a lot of different ways too. So you've given us mm -hmm. some Really it was a lot of good information. Yeah. I was thinking, no, these are no, no, these are good. good nuggets. These are good nuggets, right? But if, if, and I'm trying to communicate. Uh -huh. yeah. Your conversations with yeah. yeah. people, right? Yeah, because um, we're here to inform, empower, and inspire yes. folks. You know, we have to get folks engaged and get information so that they can do things that's right for them. Everybody and, has to make And thank you for choice. the work that both of you are doing. Oh, thank thank you. you. Now, how do your constituents reach you? They can certainly call me at my number six seven eight four six seven three two four four. Mm-hmm. And email. Um, they can email me at. I actually have two email okay. addresses. So I'll give both. One is elect Marlene Taylor Crawford at gmail dot com, and the other one is Marlene dot Taylor. Hyphen Crawford. Mm -hmm. She writing in cursive. <laughs> <laughs> this one is long. At LawrenceVilleGA.org. Awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we will have we will have both of those up when we post the um, post this episode. 
we'll have that information up. Okay, yeah. yeah. So once again, the number is 678-467-3244. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for having Thank me. Thank you so much for coming. It's always a great time. Yes. 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 I'm ready to get into this roti. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Brown soup, chicken, rice, and peas. Just to let you know, I'm of Caribbean heritage. That's so right. I, I, you don't say. Yes. 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 Oh, that's why I also was thinking that you were maybe the first Caribbean, too. To yes. Right. Yes. yes. Uh-huh. So yeah. my mom was born in um, Jamaica and my father yeah. in Cuba. Okay. okay. And they met in Harlem, New York. Wow. Wow. New York. Yes. wow. So they came to this country in the 50s. Okay. okay. So I definitely have a passion for working with immigrant families as well, and I would be remiss if I did not yeah, do that. Yes, yes, definitely. So now, were you born in Harlem? I was born in Brooklyn. Okay. And then right. they met in Harlem and New York, and they lived there for years, and then they moved to Brooklyn, okay. and that's where I was born. You can hear a little bit of that, yeah. too, right? Yeah. A little bit, definitely. The New York flavor. Uh-huh. Definitely hear the New York. Yeah. I wanted to ask you one last question before we go. You said you're very busy. I want to know, what is your go-to self-care? Because I believe in mental wellness, and I definitely believe we both do. We want to make sure that we empower people with some tips and tools. Yeah, that's a very good question. And thanks to participating in the Gwinnett chat. <laughs> dancing us. <or something>. Yes. <laughs> I decided that I'm going to continue dancing. Yeah. Oh, their studios, mm-hmm. I have to give them a shout out. Yes, absolutely. Um, when I was young, I used to love to dance. I, I did a lot of African dancing, mm-hmm. but then I stopped as I got older. But yeah. it really mm-hmm. made me realize I need to do this more yeah. often, and it's a part of my self care. Mm-hmm. So I can't tell people, you know, take care of yourself yeah, and as a absolutely. counselor, and I'm not, you yeah, know, an example. practicing yeah, what right. I'm preaching. That's right. Being an example. Yeah. Awesome. And of course, keeping my faith in, in God. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. He's my church sister. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> but if you've been following along with conversations with Karen and Kat in our very first episode, we talked about <laughs> um, the Gwinnett chat um, dance. Mm-hmm. Gwinnett chat uh, dancing stars of Gwinnett. Yeah. Yes. And, Gala. Mm-hmm. and yes. we talked about. Molly and Taylor Crawford. Right. And I came in third place. I was <laughs> look, I was about to say second. No. <laughs> yeah, but you did great. Right. I was so happy. <laughs> so sorry. I, I felt like I, I wanna be like you guys were you guys did very well. Did very well. But most of all it was for such an awesome oh, man. It yes, was absolutely, it was. absolutely Gwinnett Chat Outreach and is doing such great is doing it awesome. awesome. And he partners Gwinnett um chat partners with mm-hmm. the Lawrenceville um police department. Yes, Absolutely, yeah. Giveaway. Yeah. Giveaway. Yeah. giveaway. Yeah. That's right. And the yes. police department. Absolutely. And you're out there too. So yeah. doing a lot of outreach is so important mm-hmm. to me. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. Mm-hmm. So we want to build a partnership with right. different organizations. Yes. 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 That's right. That's There's right. so much to talk about. We have to do this. Again. <laughs> we got to bring you yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> we got to bring Definitely. you back. Definitely. But I want people to, to know that I'm approachable. That's right. And um, I care about you. I hear you. I see you. I care about you. And please reach out to me because I'm going to definitely do the work that you voted me in to do. I'm not going to compromise my integrity for anyone or anything. So thank you. Thank you. Love it. Uh-huh. Thank you. And with that, thank you for joining Conversations with Karen and Kat, where we are impacting the world one conversation at a time. <laughs>